So, uh, for the purposes of people who might be watching this video um, outside of this session, this is a, a pain management program session. And um, my name's Becky Sim. I'm clinical psychologist and help uh, coordinate the program. And we have invited a special guest along today, um, which is Sue Kidd, um, our lovely expert patient who's uh, been known to the service for quite a few years now would you say Sue and uh, yeah I think it's about five years <laughs> about five years and yes. we've um obviously you've been on a bit of a journey and we've kind of mm. been very uh fortunate to go on that journey with you and and kind of at this point it's a bit of a culmination of various factors that we were going to think about and reflect on as to kind of where you were and where you yeah. feel are now um, and we thought we'd record the session in case we can post it to our website in case other patients might be interested um, who are either thinking of coming on a, a pain management program or um, just want to to kind of view this this resource this this chat about living well despite pain and other chronic conditions I guess mm -hmm. yeah so, I mean, I guess I know you fairly well um, yeah. <laughs> and we caught up the other day and I was just kind of really interested. You, you'd kind of emailed me to tell me about where you're at these days and it was lovely to read and we caught up. So um, I just wondered if you could say a bit about your story, you know, okay, where, sure. where you've come from and, and yeah, so yeah. how you got to where you are now. <laughs> OK, well, I've had um, I've had health issues since I was sort of well very young really um primary school age and to varying degrees at different points through my life so I've had quite some big ups and quite some big downs um and I've never really understood what was happening or what the cause was sort of misdiagnosed with things and just uh, quite dismissed really um and then so yeah I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome but turns out that was a wrong diagnosis um, that was when I was 17. Um, so fast forward quite a lot of years and quite a lot of ups and downs in that time. Um, I came on the pain management programme, I think yeah, so it was about five years ago. And previous to joining that, I think I'd had maybe say 18 months leading up to it of quite a dramatic decline really and real increase in pain. Didn't really understand what was going on, um, what my problems were. Um, so during the pain management program, um, I had found various doctors to go to as well while I was doing it, and I was diagnosed with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder, um, and it makes my joints very unstable. They come out of place easily. Um, and it's it's to do with the collagen in your body. It's a, a genetic condition, so it affects literally everything, like every system has an issue every system really I was trying to think yesterday of a system that didn't have an issue there isn't one you know it's literally everything is affected um and it was a very big relief to get that diagnosis um I think that was really key actually to understand what was going on and how I could work to with what I've got with that information really to do the right thing not do the wrong thing and say so, so in the meantime I was doing the pain management program and Oh my goodness, just learned so much, so much helpful stuff, really, and met some really amazing people. Um, I'm including all the staff here because they're just amazing, really, and have helped me so much. I can't really thank them enough, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, just to learn about the mechanics of pain, that you're not necessarily doing any harm when there is pain. It doesn't mean there's like, you have to stop everything. Um, learning about pacing, um, mindfulness. Mindfulness for me is the biggest, the biggest help, I think, um, really, that's really helped me. Um, and sort of getting to acceptance through mindfulness. Um, and sort of since doing the pain programme, I sort of kept okay. declining, my health sort of kept declining. It was really going downhill. Um, I started using a wheelchair, um, I had a power wheelchair as well, which I've actually just sold as it turns out because I don't I don't need it anymore. Um, so yeah, that, that was quite a big step. Um, and then at my worst, I would say I struggled to stand up really at all. Um, 
I was having about like eight drop attacks a day where I would just collapse to the floor. Um, it was very difficult to stand. Um, I think that was sort of, I think in the end, I've seen various doctors thought to be um, a functional neurological issue that's strongly related to um, hypermobility and parts which I have as well, which means my autonomic nervous system doesn't function properly. Um, and so, yeah, at that point, I think I really started to think really seriously about exercise and what I could do. Um, and my goodness me, I started so basic. I was literally just sitting in a chair for like 30 seconds in like a good posture uh, to try and just engage some of the proper muscles. Um, when I don't sit properly, it, well, like everyone, it's just because of the laxity of my joints, things, it's it's an effort to sit up really. Um, so my muscles do have to work quite hard. Um, so after doing that for a little while, um, I started with some pedals just on the floor, just to like cycle a little bit would start again. It, I was talking at like 30 seconds, 30 seconds a day wasn't anything major. And it was so key to start so small, really, if it had pushed it too much, would have flared everything up. Then I'd be like, no, can't do it. It's, mm. it's too much. Um, so this is probably getting on for over 18 months ago. Um, and as that gradually managed to increase, um, I changed to exercise bike, which meant I was sitting more vertically, which is an issue for me, like standing uh, is an issue for me and being really quite vertical, it's quite difficult. Um, oh, it's not as difficult now, I have to say. <laughs> um, and I had to be doing a bit of cycling before I could even tackle walking. And that again was just tiny, tiny amounts, just up and down my hall, not, not going anywhere. And it took a couple of months of doing that before I actually ventured outside. Um, and so as time's gone on, I've been lucky that I've been able to keep building and building. And I really am at a place now, which is quite unbelievable actually, when I think back, it's just, yeah, it's it's very strange uh, thinking back. Um, and I, I have no idea where, where this will lead, where it will go to, I don't know. Obviously, no one can predict the future, as I think this year, this year has proven to everyone. Um, you've no idea what's going to happen. So I would just try my best to just keep going and do what I can. And throughout all that time of doing the exercises, I really did make good use, I have to say, of physio at the pain clinic. Every time I would start a new exercise, something would flare up. They would be like, Oh, I think I covered like my whole body in the end, you know, like my ankles and my feet would hurt when I started walking, I had problems with my knees and then with my hips and then with my shoulders when I started doing some like Pilates based stuff um, and my wrists and just, well, just everything really and my neck. Uh, there's been a lot of issues there as well. But yeah, it's, oh my goodness, it's so important that I was able to access that and be reassured that no, nothing, nothing major is going on. It's OK. Carry on. Just carry on. Or if things were flared up a bit, it's like, well, just maintain, maintain it. Don't push it any further. Just maintain where you are. And if you if you have to, just take it back a little bit and then and we'll carry on. Um, I'll start again. I'll just keep going, really. Mm. Um, so that's so I've just really I've been talking for absolutely ages here without a break. Uh, does that, yeah. And, um, and tell us a bit about, yeah, what, what does life look like for you now? Mm. Well, it's very, well, I'd say it's very different. It is different, but the reality is I still have chronic illness. I still have chronic pain and fatigue and various things, still have various issues. Um, so I don't think I'm going out anymore. And then obviously there's been the whole lockdown thing. So it was never an aim for me to get to or be able to go out all day, every day doing like all these things. But for me um, now, um, exercise is a really big part of my day. Um, it would be the first thing I do in the morning um, yeah, before I get a shower, because my goodness me, I do sweat, <laughs> thanks to my <laughs> autonomic nervous system. It's so yeah, get that, that done. And then it puts me to a good start for the day. And uh, walking, walking for me now, that's the biggest, that's the biggest difference. And to me, oh, walking, 
Oh, people take it for granted. They take it for granted so much. Uh, walking is freedom to me, really, and independence. Um, oh, sorry, I stopped making myself cry. <laughs> yeah, means so a lot. it does. It really does. So um, walking my dog, that's my life, really. And at this point in time, that's all I want for my life. Um, it makes me so happy, and I'm so lucky that. I live somewhere that I could walk from my house, you know, it's a lovely path like down to the sand dunes and I can just go and sit there for a bit and, you know, my dog will just sit next to me and we'll just chill out and take in the fresh air, maybe do a bit of like mindful breathing and just be really present um, and then we'll just walk home and that walk is, I think it's about, it's about four and a half kilometres, nearly five kilometres like a round trip and it takes because I have my dog and he stops at everything um the actual walking takes a good hour and a half um like yeah I can't really believe that when I say that to be honest um because it's something so you kind of went you kind of went from a really a really difficult place and it's been a roller coaster hasn't it like oh yeah (laughs) up points and down points and and right now in your life it sounds like it's a relative kind of up point and that's Mm -hmm. come with a lot of kind of hard work and perseverance and setting your mind to kind of um very very gently as you kind of described building your your body back up in some ways yeah and you're at this amazing point which I don't think any of either of us would really have, have been like, <laughs> uh, walking your dog through the pine woods for an hour and a half most days every day I think you said mm-hmm. um, and using some of your mindful skills as well and um, so you, you've talked to you've talked to really eloquently about your how you kind of physically did it in some ways yeah and having known you there's there's definitely been kind of other changes haven't they kind of oh, okay. um ways you view things and 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 what's what's helped you how have you done that mm. you know I think um I think the biggest thing to be honest is like time it takes time to like uh, accept a situation um for me I think like acceptance is just like it's so important and acceptance is not giving up which five years ago I think that's what I thought. I thought acceptance, I was just means you're giving up. Like, I was just, oh, well, here I am. It's my situation. Never mind. Um, and that's just not the case at all because I am accepting and I haven't given up and I've made like such strong progress, really, that I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought of. This wasn't my end goal either. And I think the other thing maybe is we're setting like really small goals, like not looking too far ahead at all, not, you know, when I started just using the little pedals, it was like, well, maybe at some point in a couple of months, I could progress to using the exercise bike. Um, it wasn't like, oh, I'll go for a walk for an hour and a half. I wasn't thinking far ahead at all. So oh. it was never, it was just so, then when I would reach a goal, I would set another goal. So I don't know, maybe exercise bike for 15 minutes, build up to that. Um, and these would take time. It is would take time. Um, I think if I'd have thought, like really ahead and thought I could sort of miraculously improve my situation it would have been quite overwhelming and quite a lot of pressure and if it didn't happen it was just a huge disappointment really so not looking too far ahead I think has helped um and I think as as well as the acceptance um sort of a lot of thinking of or you know you have like thoughts like oh why me like why has this happened or whatever what I've changed like you know my mindset to like well why not me why shouldn't I get sick you know there's no mm-hmm. for some reason we seem to think that life should be all happy and smiley and healthy and you live to an old age but it's not not the case at all um everybody everybody has something to deal with and it, it doesn't matter how big or little it is it's each person is valid in their in their reasons that they have to that find to find life difficult. Um, I think not compare. It's difficult. This one not comparing yourself with other people is very difficult. It's very difficult that uh, especially with like social media and stuff and 
seeing people you think that are living like an amazing life but the reality is you don't know what the life is you, yeah. you don't know what's going on behind closed doors yeah. no one is no one is happy all the time that's just not how it works um and you kind of yeah. knowing you a bit there were times where I guess certainly when we first started talking um you kind of had a brain that would um trip into worry and panic because things were kind of yeah. very overwhelming weren't they you know and there was, yeah. all, there was other stuff going on you know like you say life happens as well as mm. as dealing with these kind how you and and kind of you've also talked about how you've learned to kind of be more present how mm. how have you done that <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, do you know what I feel like since we talked about this and you said about doing it I've been trying to like back my brain trying, trying to think like how has this happened like how has it happened I think it's just been so gradual like the exercise it's been a really gradual thing not forcing myself to try and think in a way but I think this is another one that is time that you know yeah all right try and learn when to spot like a worry pops in my head or a negative thought and just to be able to acknowledge it and sit with it and just let it be there and you know that's okay it's just a thought um and it will pass it will pass like our thoughts change like all the time they just from one thing to another um so i think it's taken time for me to be able to spot when like worrying thoughts are happening and yeah I have quite a few anxiety disorders on top of everything else so I am a big time worrier big time um but that has yeah it has improved it really has improved that and I'm not 100% sure what that's all down to um I don't know I've done quite a fair bit of reading upon mindfulness and learning like about myself and I'm not like self-help books for want of a better term um just trying to discover like who I am what makes me tick what's important to me like what are my values um and to try and focus on those and things that like make me happy and bring me joy and accept that well you can't you can't be happy all the time things aren't good all the time um and I have the thought now which helps me actually when things are quite tough because they have been tough um when you know you're in a bad when I'm in a bad situation or that there's things going on I know that it will pass it will pass like whatever issue it is um it will pass like things will be better at some point um but I'm also aware that at some point well things will just go down again you know nothing lasts forever um so things are always changing and I said, oh man, I do not, I've never been good with change, as you know, <laughs> and um, learning to accept change as well, actually, is a big, a big one for me that's helped. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't know if that makes any sense, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, it really does, it really does. It's kind of saying, actually, you know, a lot of the problems and challenges, they've not necessarily kind of gone away, especially the things you couldn't change or fix, but actually you you're learning to roll with it more um you're learning to what do they say in mindful living they say kind of riding the waves or riding the storm yeah of. and also that the thing that just leapt out to me was you talked about um making a special effort to follow your values and and having to let some things go because they weren't important to you know in your life um so in what way have you followed your values would you say um, I think, I think, and maybe this is like another thing as well, like um, to find out like what's important to you, like you're more than your condition and your illness or whatever issue that you have. Um, you are more than that. You're, you're a human being. You have interests, you have passions. Everyone has something that they're interested in, you know. Um, for me, you know I will be cooking that was my big thing cooking and baking um and being in nature that's like a big that's always been a big thing for me always since I was a little girl really um so I knew that that was important to me and when I do have time like time by myself actually <laughs> that's really important um yeah time by myself outside getting some fresh air that's oh that's 
that's like my thing now that I do to calm myself down because it's really important like if it's just like you know I'm fortunate enough that I can walk that now but it could have been just I would sit on the back doorstep you know and get in the fresh air um, or sometimes just stick my head out a window just get the fresh air it just brings me back to myself um, so nature and being aware of nature is really calming to me really calming so that's important to me and you know I have other interests and you know about like environmental issues and all sorts of different things that I'm interested in and I think it's been important and I've really recognised what they are and yeah that's maybe how I want to live my life really because yeah. you, know, you you do get a bit of you do have a, a choice really most of the time um how you want to live your life what your attitude can be um yeah I've mm. I found for me it was trying to choose like no I've, I want yeah choose to live in a more mindful um way and appreciating myself and it, yeah accepting my limitations where they are but also knowing that I've been able to improve things where I have as well um mm. yeah Mm. wow so so kind of yeah accepting limitations and also being taking kind of like a mindful awareness to the choices you you can make within your life and you said that you said you know you can choose how to approach and respond and what attitude to take to things even though clearly you are someone who who does live still lives with challenges and probably still will live with challenges mm. yeah and yeah. and can you say anything about the kind of fear thing because like mm. certainly at various points um understandably I know you felt very frightened about things so, so things to do with your condition and things wider like being being worried about going for the walk being frightened you know you wanted to go walking with your dog but you were terribly mm. frightened how did you get through that I think I think I was just just <laughs> it was big <laughs> it's a big one to get through um like uh, yeah acknowledging like the fears that I had like with my conditions I have no idea no idea what the future is going to hold I don't think it's going to be great but I don't know um I'm going to have many issues for the rest of my life that's just how it is um and I don't know what they're going to be and yeah a few years ago that really got to me um yeah I just couldn't it was just really overwhelming to think about that but you know no one can predict the future um and I think that just took a bit of time and maybe working with you as well and if you spend all your time like in the future thinking about the future you really are missing out on what's happening now um and what's going on at this point in time um you know you could be worried about the future so much you miss your opportunity like now to actually make a small changes really to improve potentially your future um so maybe sort of switching i think it's just taking time to acknowledge that the worry about the future yeah and so as time has passed that's sort of eased a bit and I think my thoughts now are like well I don't know <laughs> no one knows like no one knows what's gonna happen mm. um so we'll just just go with it we'll just have to go with it um yeah and then as for the worrying about going out that oh, that was big that was a big one um when I started like walking from the house um on my own it so I was using my walking sticks then um, and I was on such a strict time, you know, I think I didn't leave the house until I got my walking up to four minutes. So I knew I could walk like a little bit up the road and back without, you know, just getting to the end of the driveway. And I was so worried about like, oh, what are people like going to think? I look so weird. Like, you know, I set a timer on my watch to like tell me after like two minutes so I could just turn around and come back. It's like, well, what if people see me just like turning around? And, like, I'm going to look like such an idiot. Um, 
and that that you know what I just had to face that and just get on with it it's just I had to just get on with it and yeah there were times when like I'd just be walking and my watch would tell me to turn around I'd be like okay well there's someone right next to me in the garden here like someone's just reversing out the drive <laughs> it must be <laughs> thing. I'm just completely mad um and when I got home that actually really made me laugh because I just thought like what this situation is just it's so weird to me that I'm even doing it um and I think because it made me laugh I, a sense of humor is very important <laughs> very important um, it really see, is see, and um, you, you had yeah. the thought you had the thought of oh god everyone's gonna think I'm an idiot or what are people gonna think of me you kind of had the thought but you you did the activity anyway because yeah. it was important to you yeah that's yeah that's right yeah just had to do it and the more I did it the the easier it got the better I was at handling that thought um yeah and in time you know it's like well if I saw someone doing that I wouldn't like I might think oh okay they're just returning to where they've come from I wouldn't think <laughs> anything of it I wouldn't think like oh my god they're so weird like I wouldn't think that if I saw someone doing that um so it's like well why well, just assume that everyone else is thinking that so that um, thought almost didn't have as much power anymore no it, it didn't Whereas at, at the all. start it was very powerful and understandably yeah um, but you you kind of noticed the thought and then you pursued what what was important yeah. to you anyway yeah. yeah and then in time like while I was walking I, I would walk for um like a certain like for halfway and then at halfway I wouldn't use my sticks coming back so I would just carry them coming back so that was a new one that was like well what if my neighbours see me going out like using walking sticks and then I come back and I'm just carrying them it's like that looks a bit weird as well but she, doesn't matter it's it really doesn't matter like I was doing what was best for me and what I needed to do um it had to be done it had to be done um yeah I don't use my walking sticks anymore um I yeah I don't use any aids for walking at all now that's Um, amazing yeah (laughs) I think your story is a true one of courage and persistence and perseverance and self-reflection making choices um Wow. And, and yeah, certainly it's a story of ups and downs and there's there's still ups and downs, I would yeah. imagine, within within what you, you're working with right now. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Sue, so you kind of wrote this really lovely, lovely piece of writing um, and kindly sent it to me. It was called um, There's a Hole in My Boat. Yes, I did. <laughs> Can you say anything about that? Yeah. So that sort of yeah that that really was like not long after lockdown really um yeah it was it was inspired by my dad you know this whole like oh we're all in it together like talk of you know that you'll hear people on the telly um you're like well actually no we're not (laughs) we all have very different situations and this yes this situation affects us all it affects everyone but it does affect everyone in different ways and in so many different ways like it's unbelievable um so we all have our situation so I think you know talking to my dad it's like well yeah everyone's life is like sailing in their own boat and yes we're all on the same sea so same things that affect the whole things that's going on in the world will affect everyone but everyone's boat is a bit different because our situations are different um you know I don't know depends like where you live like if you're rich or poor like all sorts of things really um you know anything any privilege that you might have anything that could be used to discriminate against you um can really affect uh, how you can manage your life and to me i thought like having a chronic illness is just like having a hole in your boat um it's just it's extra effort it's just extra effort and you have to keep like taking the water out you just have to keep taking it out all the time you have to keep managing it um if you to keep going you just have to um and I think I felt it's just it's not always so obvious and you know no one knows what's going on in anyone's life really you know unless you're really close with them um so yeah I think it sort of came from there really and sort of once I started thinking about like the real realities of living with chronic illness and I've gone from having an invisible illness 
to it being very visible with my power chair um, I'm back to being invisible again so really have mm-hmm. uh, seen both sides of that um, I'm treated very differently um, yeah so I think to be like accepting the whole really in your boat if you struggle with acceptance and I've I've really struggled with that at times I really have um you, if you yeah you get like really fr- frustrated and angry at your situation you'll just end up rocking your boat um and you're making it even more unsteady and it's it's not necessary it's not necessary for me like I know that now and it's very very easy to say that it's, it sounds very easy but it's not um so you just need to keep taking the water out really um and that's sort of like how I manage my conditions you know with I don't know exercise and diet and medical appointments and all sorts of things and meditation and mindfulness um so yeah, it's, it's a lot of effort that goes into managing a chronic illness whilst trying to live well. Um, and I think that's what I wanted to emphasise really, mm-hmm. um, especially when you look absolutely fine, which I get told a lot. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, oh, you look so well. It's like, okay, thank you. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> and it, um, it reminded me of that kind of choosing to still sail your boat in a particular direction even though you still have to look after the whole as well kind of thing um, yeah and mine's there is some there's some psychology literature about about you know riding boats through storms and stuff and and I, i've not seen one so far with about the hole in the boat and that really struck mm-hmm. me because it kind of sounded like lots of the people i talked to where they are learning to to do what's right for them in order to keep keep going essentially and and, and more than that you know to live a a life where they have you know they can enjoy life you know yeah. even, though, even though there are illnesses you're having to manage still yeah, yeah. oh thank you mm-hmm. so we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna email the hole in the boat round if people are interested and, and post it on our website as well I think so okay we have said. and um at this point before I just stop the recording um has any of the staff got any questions they want to ask Sue um if you want to unmute if your staff and uh, ask Sue a question, just so that we don't record any of our, our patients at this point. <laughs> Okie dokie. So I'm going to stop the recording, then we'll come back together as a group. But thanks so much, Sue. It's okay. been uh, <laughs> lovely to hear your story and, and interesting to, to pull out the ways you you now do live well with your, your condition. Uh, despite the challenges. So thank you. Oh, you're right. welcome.